Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be covering how to use the OBS mode on the G1000 units in Microsoft Flight Simulator. More specifically, I'll be looking at how to use it to fly a straight in approach to a runway that doesn't have any other instrument landing systems like a localizer or an ILS. And I'll also explain how to use it to join a traffic pattern instead. This technique is particularly useful for the airports that you're going to run into on the bush trips, but you can use it pretty much anywhere. And all you need to know is the runway heading to make it work. All right, if this sounds like something that's interesting to you, make sure to keep watching and let's fly. I'm flying a short hop from Donegal over to Derry in Northern Ireland to demonstrate how to use the OBS. You can see the runway has a heading of 08 and the last segment of my flight plan has me coming in to the airport on a heading that's about 15 degrees offset from the runway itself. This is the sweet spot for using the OBS. You're going to want to be probably within about 30 degrees on either side of the runway heading to come in and fly to straight in approach. That means I could probably make the OBS work if I was flying anywhere between heading 050 and 110. Any more than that, and it's going to be really hard to align yourself with the runway in time unless you're really far out when you start doing it. If you're familiar with VOR navigation, you know that you can fly to a VOR or from a VOR on any of the 360 radials or courses that are being emitted from it. And if there was a VOR right at the airport, we could just use it to align ourselves with the runway. In this case, there is no VOR at the airport, but the beauty of the G1000 GPS is that we can do this with any waypoint along our flight plan with the OBS setting, and that's what we're going to look at now. All right, I'm already mid-flight. I took off from the airport as normal, and I'm flying to my destination following the flight plan that I was showing you in the planning section. I'm actually coming up on my destination already because it is a very short hop, and I've started a very slow descent down to my approach altitude. I'm on track to get to the airport right now, but if you have a look at the track on the multifunction display on the right hand side, you can see that it's saying my current track over the ground towards the airport is 093. Instead of flying that course, I'm going to change that with the OBS setting to the new course that I want to fly over the ground. First though, I need to decide when to start fiddling with the OBS setting. A normal straight and final approach is going to be about 3 nautical miles, but I like to make my OBS approaches a little bit longer, something more like 5 to 8 nautical miles. That's going to give me a little bit more time to intercept the new course that I want to fly over the ground. For that reason, I'm going to change the zoom level on the multifunction display on the right hand side, and I'm going to set it either to 7.5 or 10 nautical miles. And once the airport starts coming into view on the map, that's when I know that I need to start fiddling with the OBS setting. I'm flying with the autopilot enabled on nav mode right now, which means if I enable OBS and I start changing the course over the ground that I want it to fly, the plane is immediately going to start trying to do that. To avoid that effect, what I do is I sync my heading bug to my current heading and I switch to heading mode for the time being. Like that, I can make the changes I want to the OBS, make sure they're right, and then I can re-enable the autopilot on nav mode if I really want to. Now it's time to configure the OBS course. The runway I want to land on is on a heading of 080, which is off by about 15 degrees from my current course. The first thing I have to do is enable OBS by pressing the soft key at the bottom of the primary flight display. Next, it's time to set the course I want to fly by twisting the CDI knob, which is going to be the triangle knob on the right hand side of the primary flight display. I'm going to set the course to 080 since that's the heading for the runway, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about this in just a little bit. You can see the CDI needle, which is the course deviation indicator, moved itself all the way over to the right, and that's telling me that my course that I want to fly is somewhere to the right. So I'm going to use heading mode to go ahead and intercept that course. I'm going to use about a 45 degree angle in order to intercept the course because I am pretty close and I want to get there quickly enough so that I have time to set myself up for that long final like I want. I could have enabled nav mode to do it, but the autopilot tends to overcompensate when it's trying to re-intercept the course and it'll swing back and forth, so I try and avoid that as much as possible. I might consider re-enabling nav mode once I'm re-established on the course or just about, but usually by then I'm getting close to landing anyways and I'll just hand fly the airplane the rest of the way. 
The other thing of note is that you can also see how far the course is relative to your current position at the center of the HSI where it says XTK. The number right next to it indicates how far in terms of nautical miles you are from the course. And that's it. Once the course starts to recenter itself on the HSI and the needle is moving more towards the center of it, I'm going to start my turn back towards 080 to line myself up with the course. If I can spot the runway in the distance, I'll probably line myself up with it right away instead. But if I'm far enough out and I can't spot it for whatever reason, I'm going to continue flying the CDI course until I do see it. That being said, the course still won't be perfectly aligned with the runway, and that's because setting the course, it's doing it relative to the coordinates of the waypoint, which in this case is the actual airport and not the runway itself. The OBS really just gets me approximately on the right course, and then I have to do the rest of the work by looking for the runway and aligning myself with it. That is, of course, why instrument landing systems like the localizer and the ILS exist, so that you can align yourself a lot more accurately than you can with something like the OBS. I spotted the runway now, so I'm going to turn to align myself with it, and I won't rely on the OBS anymore for horizontal guidance. I'll usually stay at about a thousand feet above ground level until I can clearly make out the runway and figure out how I'm doing from a glide slope perspective and adjust accordingly. That's one thing that's really important to remember about the OBS. It's only giving you horizontal guidance, so it's telling you if you are left or right of where you want to be, but it's not telling you if you're too high or too low, or if there is a mountain in the way that you might crash into. Now let's say the winds were blowing from the opposite direction, and instead of landing on runway 8 like I am right now, I had to come in and land on runway 26 instead. The easiest thing to do in that case is to still tune the OBS to the course of 080, but what I would do is I would fly to the right of the course by about a quarter mile on the cross track so that I come in parallel to the runway and not aligned with runway 08. Like that, you're going to be on almost the perfect track to fly the downwind base and final legs. If I was coming in perpendicular to the runway heading, or if I was more than 45 degrees offset from the final approach course, I would probably not use OBS at all. Instead, I'd overfly the runway and do a maneuver to come around and join the traffic pattern, which I've explained in detail in another video, so I'll link to that one at the end of this one. I hope you learned something useful in this video, and if you did, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to get more similar content. I publish a new video every two weeks with tips, tricks, and tutorials for newcomers to the world of flight sim, and your likes and subscribes are what keep this channel going. I'll see you soon.